it's very easy to hold on to some sort of fantasy about what's going to make you into a happy person. But overall, it doesn't change the level of contentment and unsatisfaction. This is a gender conversion therapist trying to convince me that I'm not trans. He's practicing gender exploration therapy, a new anti-trans strategy sweeping across the country, spearheaded by a fringe organization called Therapy First. The word exploration is intentionally misleading. Exploring one's gender identity is crucial. I did that for three months myself before getting my own surgery last year. But this organization has an agenda. Their own website says gender-affirming medical care should be avoided. Their own board calls being transgender hysteria. I wanted to see this manipulation in action. So I went undercover and met twice with a therapist who practices this gender exploration therapy to see what goes on inside these sessions. So, tell me. I told him what I told my own therapist last year, that I've never really felt like a woman and I'm thinking about getting top surgery so my body reflects how I feel inside. At first, he appeared neutral. And there are people who proceed with transitioning and then do have regrets. And there are people who proceed with transitioning that are happy and are happy for. He assured me. I think of myself as trying to help you make a decision for yourself. Which sounds great, but here's where the manipulation comes in. I'm working with a, a, a young woman who has been seriously depressed her whole life. She, Valen, is happy about transitioning, but is still severely depressed. Think about it this way. You want to go swimming, and you ask a lifeguard if it's safe. He says it's up to you, but did you hear about the person who got bit by a shark? You're probably not going to go swimming. So listen, as this guy brings up another transgender person he allegedly knows who's unhappy. She's surprised for trouble that people have a reaction to it and that people see her as a trans woman rather than a, as a woman. After he warned me about these two specific people, he started to threaten societal backlash. It's naive to think that there are going to be no social consequences. Mm -hmm. There is maybe nothing to deal with. You may have seen it in you know, online. People have got very strong reactions to being misgendered. I told him I really don't care what other people think. So he pivoted. Is my desire to transition really just a sign of underlying depression? It's very easy to hold on to some sort of fantasy about what's going to make you into a happy person. But overall, it doesn't change the level of contentment and unsatisfaction. I told him that, no, overall, I'm actually a pretty happy person, especially after cutting my hair. You're happy with it the way it is now, and you have no intentions of regrowing it, it sounds like it. No. But you kept it until you were 28 or 29. Do you think that's something to wonder about? What do you mean? It seems sort of incongruous that you would have kept very long hair for as long as you did. So I'm curious about Curious? The curiosity ended when he asked me if I was happy with my haircut. Telling me it's incongruous with the way I live? That's an opinion with an agenda. Do you ever miss feeling and looking more feminine? Do you ever feel uncomfortable? dress and looking the way you do. I don't. You don't? I feel more comfortable presenting more masculine. After that comment, I had to leave. I honestly was feeling pretty frustrated and uncomfortable. But you know who doesn't get to leave? Thousands of trans kids and adults sent to these sessions to be talked out of who they know they are inside. For a list of gender-affirming resources and therapists, you can start by visiting Mayday.Health.